Hey guys, welcome to Lingua Marina channel and welcome to my new studio setup. I decided to move to my guest bedroom and this is what everything looks like here. I am planning to post this video on my birthday. Birthday, birthday, birthday. So you're probably watching it somewhere around my birthday. First homework to you is to guess my age down in comments below and uh, I'm gonna like comments that are correct. and. I decided to make this video special. I decided to make it less educational and more fun. And in this video, we're gonna talk about fun facts about the English language so that the next time when you're in the company of other English learners and English speakers, you could be like, did you, Did you know, know that there, that are, there more are more English, English speakers, speakers in, China in China than in, in the US? US? So that kind of stuff. So if you're interested in learning those facts, continue watching this video. Fun fact number one, a new word is added to the dictionary every two hours. That means that around 4,000 new words are added to the English dictionary every single year. Are you serious? And that's because there is Airbnb, for example, I'm airbnb at my friend. Or you Google something, uh, have you Googled this? So with the new companies, with new trends, uh, there are so many things that we're adopting as English speakers. So yeah, 4,000 words every year. Fact number two, more people have learned English language as their second language than there are native speakers in the world. So guess what? If every English language student would want to practice one-on-one uh, -on -one with a native speaker, there wouldn't be enough native speakers for everyone to practice. Uh, this is so cool to realize and this really proves that English is this universal language that you have to know wherever you are, whatever you're doing. English is the language of everything. So. Uh, it's a really good thing that you're here right now. That means that you are learning this magical language. Oh, you speak English now? Yep, I learned. I'm gonna read two words to you and uh, you're gonna read them with me. Super expialidocious. And this is not the longest word in English. This word means fantastic. It was popularized by uh, the movie Mary Poppins, but however, there is a word that's even longer. Let's try and read it together. Pneumo ultra microscopic silicovolcano coniosis. It's a type of a lung disease caused by inhaling ash and dust. And that is the longest word in English. Try and memorize it and then maybe use it in a conversation. I'm kidding, don't do it. That's almost useless. The next fact is English is the language of the air. Uh, and that means that every pilot has to know English because everything that's happening in the sky is in English. The next fun fact, the average English speaker knows between 20,000 to 30,000 words. That means that an average person in the street would understand those words, but people don't really use all of them. So yes, if they're reading literature, if they're reading a textbook in some subject, they would understand. But on average, people use like 10,000 words. And if they use like 30,000, that means they are probably a professor at a university. So they know a lot of specific vocabulary for uh, their subject. Do you know what's the most used word in English? It's the word I. And I, 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 I thought I'm... There you go, most used word. The next fun fact, I don't know how useful it is, but maybe it is. If you write down all the numbers um, as words, like if you write down one, two, three, four, five, six, and you go on and on and on, there won't be ever letter B until you reach billion. By the way, guys, I am really happy that one of my favorite online learning platforms is sponsoring this video. Skillshare is the sponsor of this video. I was preparing this ad, I was researching new courses that they have, and uh, I've stumbled upon Greg McCune. Uh, he wrote The Essentialism, like one of the best books out there. He's talking about how to optimize your environment to be more productive, how to stop worrying about things that don't matter. Um, I read it maybe like six months ago, and it really 
helped me change my life. And by the way, this space, I have it thanks to that book because I realized I need to create a space for work in my apartment and that was inspired by Greg. And he has his own video course on Skillshare. And guys, if you haven't read the book and or if you have read the book, you have to take this course because again, it reminds you what you need to focus on, uh, what you need to pay attention to. You don't have to worry about things that don't matter. You don't have to say yes to everything. You have to learn to say no. Um, the link will be below. Highly encourage you because this guy is amazing and the platform itself is amazing, really easy to use. And as always, the first 500 subscribers who hit the link below Below this video will get two free months of Skillshare so you can just go ahead and enjoy the course by Greg. By the way if you don't know what Skillshare is, Skillshare is an online learning community that offers membership with meaning. It offers a great variety of different courses on different topics like uh, video creation, photography, productivity, that's one of my favorite, uh, or you know, videography, editing, whatever you're interested in, go ahead and explore your creativity or if you're interested in becoming more productive, Greg's course is right there for you. He's gonna teach you uh, how to navigate through your life. And again, the first 500 subscribers who hit the link below will get two months of Skillshare for free. And by the way, if you decide to proceed with Skillshare, an annual subscription is less than $10 a month. The next fun fact is that the word good has over 380 synonyms in English and it makes it a word that has the most synonyms. And remember, I made a couple of videos where I told you never say okay, never say good, never say this, this and that because can you realize there are over 300 synonyms to the word good and uh, if you keep saying good over and over and over again that makes your speech boring and you want to sound interesting, you want to sound more like a native speaker and a native speaker would use a lot of different words so um, good uh, can be replaced with many other options. The next one fact is that after American Revolution, uh, people in America decided to make a language different from British and uh, they thought that British English had too much of things that are not necessary. Like for example, color in British you would insert U and you make it a six letter word. In American, it will be without you and the five letter word. And there are many other words like this, like program or catalog. And this is what makes American English different. And the first American dictionary was published in 1806. And this is how American people proclaimed independence from Great Britain. They even created their own language. The next fun fact, there is a word Q. And uh, it actually has five letters, but it's pronounced the same way as its first letter, Q. And uh, if you don't know what it means, it means line. So when you come to a cafe uh, in the US on a Sunday morning, people will be queuing or lining up, waiting for their turn to order food. The word synonym. It's one of the few words in English language that doesn't have a synonym. The next fun fact, you know, when we want to say the day after tomorrow, we say the day after tomorrow, but there is actually a word, like one word for it, over morrow. That means the day after tomorrow. There is this word, it's in the dictionary, it's just people don't use it anymore. Did you know that Shakespeare has added over a thousand new words to the English language? When he was writing his um, master thesis, he included more and more words and people just continued using them. Uh, some of examples, addiction, when you're addicted to a drug, when you're addicted to another person, that word was created by Shakespeare. This is an addiction. Cold-blooded, when you are cruel and uh, you don't have any emotions about that, like there are cold-blooded murderers who kill people. Um, that word is also by Shakespeare. Oh, y'all cold-blooded! Swagger, when you're boasting, disrespectful. That unjustifiable swagger. Break the ice when you were silent and then you start a conversation, you break the ice. I'll break the ice. All of those words created by Shakespeare. That's amazing. Like, I feel this is such a huge accomplishment. Like, he lives through those words. When we use them in our speeches, uh, Shakespeare is alive. That's an amazing footprint you can leave behind. And the last but not the least, fun fact, there are words in the English language that don't have a meaning and they actually have a special uh, term. They're called ghost words. They appeared because somebody made a typo when they were working on the dictionary. Uh, one of the examples is doored. 
It was in the dictionary for eight years in the mid 20th century. Um, it didn't have any meaning. Ghost word, Dorn. Thank you guys so much for watching this video up to the very end. If you're not yet subscribed to this channel, hit the red button subscribe and smash the like button for the algorithm so that it knows uh, that this video is great and it should recommend it to other people. Thank you so much and I look forward to seeing you in my next vlogs. Bye.